I have a plan. Monsieur has a lot. Check it out. Spell you gon' miss me when I'm gone. Go. You gon' miss me when I'm gone. Oh. Hey, keep rocking on. Yo, you gon' miss me with that bullshit. And you think you have slick trying to pull shit. Child custody to get the best of me. Hell no. Nah. Red pill is my destiny. These bitches be crazy. Just go your own way. Take your freedom right back in the rest of your bay. Men are from Mars and the women from Venus. Fuck that bitch, yo. I have the penis. Write your name in the snow, bitch. MGTOW is freedom. Not the sin of the sun, and no, I'm not credence. Ain't gonna be no bad moon rising. Ain't gonna burn my shit like Andre Rising. I finger the flow like a bitch on a period. She a hot dog thrown in the middle of the period. Bear witness to a dawn of a renaissance and guarantee you will miss it all when it's gone. You go. Miss me when I'm gone. That's it. Hey! It is I, the mighty, the mighty, the mighty, the mighty show. Hey, hi everybody. Um, it, it's Psyche Soap. I think I broke it. Oh shit. Psyche Soap! Doo doop doo! In the bucket! Doo doop doo! Flag his channel! Doo doop doo! Kick him in the nads! Doo doop doo! Write a strongly worded letter! Doo doop doo! Who hurt you? Doo doop doo! Call the police! Doo doop doo! Party time! Excellent! <laughs> ah. Oh shit! We are in the bucket. Where we have fun, we let loose, and we speak the red and even the black pill truth. This episode might offend even some of my best friends and ardent supporters, but as promised, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Why do I choose to stop caring? Why? Because I can, stupid. And, and by the way, for those that are, you know, tuned in or, you know, that are checking the playback or what have you, check to see if your ass is subscribed. I mean, damn. It, that's all you do. You just press the subscribe button, turn it off, and then press it again, and then press that little all bell. You know what I mean? And then you got it. All right? Um, shit. So, I usually upload, of course, on the playbacks, on BitChute, Odyssey. Um, it's right now going live on MGTOW.TV, going live right now on Odyssey. I'm going to check that real quick and see what's going on. 
Hopefully that does not fuck with my connection. Alright, so it kind of looks like it's going. It's got its um, ad and shit like that that's going on right now. Fucking, you know, enough respect to Salty Cracker. He's cool. Well, God damn it. You know what I'm saying? What's up with all the motherfucking ads, though? Shit. Y'all can't see that back here, but that's what I'm looking at right now. Some of this goofy shit. Okay. So, I'm going live on... Okay, we're live right now on Odyssey. We're live right now on MGTOW.TV. And we're live right now on YouTube. Now, the first hour is on YouTube. The second hour is on Odyssey. You know what I'm saying? Because that's where we start to premiere that wonderful, beautiful things that make you go... Damn. All right, and the audio only versions on Anchor and other well known podcasting sites like Spotify and iTunes. I'm not fucking with Rumble, I don't want to rumble yet because when I put on my things that make you go, Damn. they want to take the motherfucker off. All right, so uh, those that are with me tonight, I love all one of you. You know, maybe it's the nasally voice. Maybe because I sound younger than I really am. I don't give a fuck. Fuck it. It's been an eventful week, hasn't it? Damn. Sadly, I don't have any show prep. So I'm just going to be flying by the seat of my fucking pants on this one. I'm all over the map today. Um, Over the week, there was a chorus, you know... um, my man's pastor did a show. Pastor forty dollars, big up. <coughs> All right, and um, he's been, you know, he, you know, he got on, and basically the brother was sick and tired of the way that the uh, the uh, black manosphere moves. I don't like it myself. Um, I mean, quite frankly, like um, Walt Diddy, big up. I mean, I've said this long before. I mean, just back when, back before I even started the channel, back when I was just um, a fan, you know, just Psyche Soap, just out here, you know, just checking out this thing that we call this, this manosphere and whatnot. And, um, you know, when it all had started between, like, well, it is not when it all started. It's been around. Ain't nothing new, right? We just... I mean, it's just that we as men decide to take it with us on YouTube. And um, it's done its thing. It's ran its course. And by that, I mean it's ran its course. I mean, if it's growing, yo, it's growing outside of the confines of this space on YouTube or on this space on the Internet. If you go out there, you know, you do see people that are MGTOW and all but name. You know, the thing that the thing about it is, is that, you know, there's an actually an acronym, a name and a philosophy to how you do it. And so um, there's that. Aye, aye. Oh, man. This Saturday Internet is pissing me off because ain't nobody. You know what I'm saying? OK, but that's OK. You know, we can sit here and talk to ourselves. It don't matter. It's it's a podcast too, so there will be the audio playback. You've already heard it. Some of y'all even just come on in here to tune in for the motherfucking intro. And that's cool too, you know. I put those together, you know, to, to pretty much have you thinking a little bit. Alright, so you know, I don't want to be lumped in with black man is fear this and black man is fear that because quite frankly, I didn't get into this, you know, with with racial and cultural barriers on my mind. I didn't bring that in here. The goal was to see no color anyway. You know, this is for all men. And um you I hope you guys have seen some of the soap classics. I mean, I'm on my new channel Psyche Soap 2 after getting it, you know, flagged away to oblivion. But I'm still around, still doing my thing. But, 
now I'm putting back up some of the, you know, the older stuff that was pretty good and got good responses. And um, do check out Soap's Classics every day. I'm putting them out every day until I fucking run out. Early in the morning, if you're in, in the Americas or, you know, toward the night evening hours when you're, um, if you're on the other side of the world. And so, that's what that is, my man. Alrighty, alrighty. Alright. So, I'm not having the best of weeks. You know, um, bad fucking week, bruh. I mean, the IRS has fucked up my taxes, and I'm gonna have to fuck around and file a goddamn amendment. Ugh, I'm looking at that. Now, I'm looking forward to that. Excuse me, it's one of them damn things that just makes you go. Alright. Yeah, man. And it's crazy like that, though. Yeah, greetings, Craig Furness. We are in here. But yeah, the IRS fucked up my taxes, bro. And, um, fucked up thing about it is that I probably should have waited until getting those done. Because some of those things were based on other pieces of paperwork. And now that I have, you know, a good 90% of it, as opposed to, what, 60% of it when I was doing them, um, I kind of see why that that's happening. Anyhow. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's rather fucking depressing. You know what I'm saying? I want to get back to laughing and talking some good shit. Just, <laughs> Get back to that real soap shit. That soapy shit. To keep you clean inside. Clean your mind. You know. Alright. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Oh. Craig for an essay. The state taxes have out. They have out the screws to me. Yet. Federal still owes me almost 900 from last year. Yeah. Um, the, I'm, that's why I'm in South Dakota. You know, I don't want to bother with state. I mean, at first when I was younger, with state tax returns, yeah, you know, it picked up and, you know, helped me out when federal didn't do too much of a fuck. You know, when federal didn't do shit for me, state would usually help me out. But, um, you know, after you know, the shafter <laughs> in Colorado, <laughs> you know, I had to go-go, bro. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's my monster. That is Leslie, my lovely little monster. Yeah, man. So, you know, it, it's fucking stupid. I mean, this was a crazy week. YouTube banned the heel. And, ooh, and with Kim Iverson. Ooh, ooh. <coughs> Look good. I know I'm MGTOW, but fuck. <coughs> she finding mother. Anyway. So, yeah, the hill rising. I would watch that on YouTube to start my morning off. And, you know, all of a sudden they got flagged because, you know, Biden started talking about. No, 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 Brandon, not Brandon, not Brandon. It's a uh, fucking, um. Trump, 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 <laughs> right? Trump started talking about the erection. <laughs> and, and, every, and that's what got him flagged and shit. So I was like, oh my gosh, man. That's what got him flagged and all of that. So uh, yeah, man. The hill's back. And that's cool. We, um, you know, I'm, I'm starting to start my mornings off again. And that's great. Um... The CDC is fucking up the 18 to 49 year old stats. They're not going to release it because the moment they do release it, some real shit is going to happen. And speaking of the documents, the documents, I'm going to tear it on the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have the documents yet, but it's been said that there was like nine pages of side effects having to deal with the Roni. And I'm like, oh, fuck, dude. Yep, I'm glad I didn't get that shit. 
I'm glad I didn't get that, but I sure do feel for those that did, you know, take the bait. Some of them, some of you. Uh, but for some of you, fuck ass, yo, I want to drop another F-bomb, but some of you bitch-made motherfuckers didn't, you know, wanted to just rub our faces through the mud because we didn't want to take the shit, you know. And nowadays, shit, Biden's distracting us with Ukraine and who do what and Brandon's blaming Putin for high gas prices. Let me tell you something, bruh. Look, high gas prices, that shit ain't nothing new. That shit's been going on since... That that shit was going... $4 a gallon, the last time I seen that shit was... 2006, bro. It's 2006, and that shit ran through on up until uh, uh, 2012. 2012 from between the time of 2006 all the way on up to 2012 high gas prices ain't nothing new god damn it it ain't nothing new some of y'all got short memories like quarterbacks with concussions what the fuck's going on man <gasps> let the motherfucker find out though you know but yeah man I is fucking up my taxes and the hill's back, and that's good. CEC don't want to show you what's really going on. The, the classified documents behind the Roni, they don't want to show that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, look at this. Look, Ukraine. Just like that motherfucker that go, hey, look, squirrel. Or, hey, Superman. And then they fool you, and then they do other shit. <laughs> that's what that shit is, man. And uh, So, yeah, there's that. Yeah, man. And, um, I'm gonna get on some other shit. Show you a few things up here. I got a few things, motherfucker. Yeah. yeah I'm gonna move that out of the way so that my internet runs at least some type of smoothly, you know? Because my shit is fucked up. Move it from the studio. Do do do. Kick it in the nads. Okay, let me go on over here. Share my screeny. Now, some of you guys that are watching uh, or listening, excuse me, on on your uh, on your podcast, Dealy Boppers, I got something for you. I'm gonna be reading some few articles. Let you know. So, I know the, I know some of y'all have gotten this story when it was all out and about. Says here, Dunkin' Donuts manager punches customer to death after being called the N word. Really, though? Really? <laughs> Let's get into this shit. All right. Wow. Is that my nephew? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, shit. Oh, man. A black manager at a Dunkin' Donuts in Florida who fatally punched an elderly white customer who called him the N-word, who white customer, who called him the N-word would not spend any time behind bars and instead will serve two years of house arrest as part of his guilty plea. Two years of house arrest for that? In Florida? What? What? What the fuck? Now, you, you gotta excuse me, guys. I just... Now, yeah, I've seen the story. I've seen people have their rounds with it, but I really didn't pay it much no mind until I seen that. Now, okay... Story from the media, take it with a grain of salt, you know, pull all the information in, let's get it. Frustrated with the service at one of the donut store's Tampa locations, Von L. Cook marched into the store and berated the manager, calling him the N-word, police said. The manager, 27-year-old Corey Pujols, who's black, asked Cook not to say it again. 
When Cook decided to call him the N-word a second time, Julio's healed him in the jaw. The older man became unconscious, falling backwards and hitting his head on the floor. He was dead three days later. So, all right, it kind of harkens me back to one of my, uh, to one of my pharmacy stories, you know. I mean, I was a shift manager there. Some of you soap fans know what it is. Um, yeah, it was my turn to uh, cover one of the associates on the register and um uh this white dude he was had to have been a good you know he stood about six two six four big ugly looking <laughs> monster looking motherfucker right and so you know he got he got all pissy like a little bitch because his change didn't look clean enough I mean, the nerve of these motherfuckers. The nerve of these motherfuckers. But anyway, so the guy got pissy because, you know, the change was, you know, not to his standard. It looked too dirty and all of that bullshit. And so, you know, I ain't like it. I ain't like his attitude. And so I got with it, you know, I said, here, you know, I I switched out the change. But I, you know, threw it at him. (laughs) I threw the shit at him. See, I I wasn't like old Corey in the story. You know, I did something to be called a nigga. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And so he said it, you know what I'm saying, with the hard E-R. I don't know why niggas say hard R. But hard E-R I mean in some states Like this right here Florida I mean Yeah The hard E-R Will land you in the E-R Motherfucker And there are some of those that do that I mean I had to train myself out of that reflex You know One I was in the store The motherfucker said it And I told him when I got off You know I'm off at 10 o'clock You know that, you you know when to see me, you know. So, got off at ten. The motherfucker didn't come back. All right. So back to the story. So, when Cook decided to call him the N word a second time, who just hit him in the jaw. The older man became unconscious, falling backwards, hitting his head on the floor, and he was dead three days later. The uh, Corey had been originally charged with aggravated manslaughter. Following the May 5th, 2021 incident, prosecutors accepted a plea deal from the donut shop manager who agreed to change his plea to guilty for a lesser charge of felony battery in exchange for a more lenient sentence. So there was a there was a plea deal. All right. On Monday, a judge decided he would serve two years of house arrest complete 200 hours of community service, and attend an anger management course. Florida investigators said Cook had initially gone through the drive through but was so angered about the lack of service, he parked his car and entered into the store and complained. Ooh, ooh. I know what you mean, bro. Man. Employees knew Cook as a frequent customer who was regularly regularly troublesome and abusive, according to a release from the state attorney's office. Prosecutors said it was important there were consequences for Pugil's actions, but also took into account Cook's abusive behavior and very troublesome criminal history, which included prison time. Wow. They claimed this combination of factors made Cook an unsympathetic victim. Hmm. Hmm. This outcome holds the defendant. Uh, this outcome holds the defendant accountable, while taking into account the, to- the totality of the circumstances, the aggressive approach and despicable racial slur used by the victim, along with the defendant's age, lack of criminal record, and lack of intent to cause the victim's death. Grayson Cam, a spokesperson for Hillsborough State Account- Attorney's Office told Fox 13. According to the autopsy report, 
Cook suffered a skull fracture and brain contusions from the fall. After he fell and became unconscious in Duncan, Donuts, <laughs> Tampa Fire Rescue transported him to an area hospital where he died three years later. All right, all right. I, um, this is, this runs sort of a duality with me because, no, I don't feel for the guy because the N-word was, was put out there, but I feel for the guy because the, um, because when you are working a store, like any type of a store, when you're managing a store, right? And not only do you deal with your, you know, shit from your subordinates, shit from your um, higher up managers. Excuse me. Excuse me there. Shit from your higher up managers, shit from your customers. I mean, shit from your subordinates, and then, yes, shit from your customers, of course. And then, from those, uh, for those customers to just come in and just give you shit, you know, kind of makes you want to do what that guy did, you know what I'm saying? Turning him into one of them things that make you go, <laughs> Speaking of which, I might have to find the video to that. Because <laughs> I would like to put it on one of them things that make you go, Anyway, yeah, man, so the guy punched him, you know, falls unconscious, dies three days later, and as it turns out, the, um, the, the, the victim in this, you know, um, ends up suffering, you know, no, it turns out that the criminal history of that victim you know, he he was abusive of some type, but it doesn't. It only tells us that much of the story. You know, um, I think others have covered it in, in great length. I mean, YouTube and other videos or other channels and alt texts will probably open that up a little more. I mean, this is my first reaction to watching, to even just reading the story, and so you know, I can only take it from where. The, the where Corey came from, not from where Von Dale has came from, you know what I'm saying? Um, what had happened for for Von Dale to call Corey a nigga? You know, where did it come from? You know, what what did Corey do or say to make that happen? <clears throat> now. If Von Dell was being a uh, being like a Kevin, which is a male Karen, if he was being a Kevin and all of this goofy shit, then hey, I think the old fuck got what he deserved. But over the N word, mm, I kind of think that was fucked. You know, you know, you. I mean, you you gonna punch him over a word? I went through the same shit Corey went through. But no, I, I mean, shit, I just gave the motherfucker a time to hit me, you know what I'm saying? A time to get down, you know, and sent that guy on his merry way. And he and the motherfucker didn't come back, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, don't, I don't know, man. That was kind of weird, though. I mean, yeah, take that how you will, man. Take that how you will. I got another little uh, nugget of joy that's been making the rounds here. Let me let me show you this shit, man. All right, and for you guys um, that are listening on the uh, podcast, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna put this uh, end of Jussie Smollett up here, Juicy Smollett, as they call him. Check it out. <laughs> stated in those filings are waived for purposes of appeal. You cannot afford lawyers or transcripts. They would be provided free of charge. 
Do you have any questions? No, I would just like to say to Your Honor that I am, uh, I am not suicidal. Okay. I am not suicidal. I am innocent, and I am not suicidal. Right. Yeah. If I did this, then it means that I stuck my fist in the fears of black Americans in this country for over 400 years, and the fears... ...of the LGBTQ community. Your Honor, I respect you, and I respect the jury, but I did not do this. And I am not suicidal. anything happens to me when I go in there, I did not do it to myself. And you must all know that. What an odd thing to say. Uh, ten minutes from learning the fate that will change his life forever, and we yet have any sign of Mr. Smollett and his entourage. Irv, if we could bring you in for just a second. Yeah. Knowing his punctuality issues, would the judge frown upon that? Would, would say you, you, you not only disrespected the jury by lying, but you've disrespected me in this entire process by not even showing up on time, any time? And what happened? Turns out that you're not a victim of a hate crime. You're not a victim of a racial hate crime. You're not a victim of a homophobic hate crime. You're just a charlatan. Pretend Thank you. That said it all. That said it all. I mean, for my guys that were um, just fucking... See, I got to get used to doing this thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I'm over here trying to narrate the shit. And the motherfucker went silent. And I'm like, why is it silent? I can't hear myself. It's because I didn't have the fucking audio on. God damn. Uh, mm -mm, gotta be more careful so back where i was man like back over here this motherfucker had the little nerve to watch the camera see how he did that that motherfucker right there 
See that? That tells you it. This is what says it all. That is what caused the bullshit he's in right now. Let me find out. All right. That right there, that look says it all. I ain't got to say shit else. You know, he's an actor. Hello. I mean, come on. And you know what? He wasn't even that good in his show and in this courtroom. God damn it. I mean, what the fuck, man? Ugh. Oh, man. Ugh. Keep it going. Okay. I am not suicidal. Okay. I am not suicidal. I am innocent. Shut the fuck up. You ain't no Jeffrey Epstein motherfucker. <laughs> you gonna be one of them damn things and make you go. <laughs> and they gonna be plugging you up, man. There's gonna be this big motherfucker right behind your ass going. <laughs> And you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and all that bullshit. And I am not suicidal. If I did this, then it means that I stuck my fist in the fears of black Americans and this country for over 400 years. Since 1980. Somebody's going to stick their fist in something that you won't like, Jesse. Or may you, or you might like that sort of a thing. I don't know. In the fears of the LGBTQ community, Your Honor, I respect you and I respect the jury, but I did not do this. And I am not suicidal. You ain't respecting shit, nigga. Shut the fuck up. <gasps> Bitch. If anything happens to me when I go in there, I did not do it to myself. And you must all know that. What an odd thing to say. Ain't it? Uh, ten minutes from learning the fate that will change his life forever, and we yet have any sign of Mr. Smollett and his entourage. Irv? If we could bring you in for just a second, yeah. knowing his punctuality issues, would the judge frown upon that? Would, would say you, you, you not only disrespected the jury by lying, but you've disrespected me in this entire process by not even showing up on time, any time? And what happened? Turns out that you're not a victim of a hate crime. You're not a victim of a racial hate crime. You're not a victim of homophobic hate crime. You're just a charlatan pretending to be a victim of a hate crime. There you go. Bingo! <laughs> and nothing fucking more. So, cut the games, bruh. Cut the games. I mean, you're gonna get what's coming to you. If you, you know, somehow get a hold of this stream, you know what I'm saying? My irrelevant ass channel. But anyway, let's get it. And that's shameful, especially from the family you got brought up with, with your family values. It's so sad. Hey, what's happening? Salute. <laughs> Thank you for coming through. All right, all right. We'll get back on to this motherfucker and restart it. The damage you've done to yourself is way beyond anything else that can happen to you from me or any other judge that would be sentencing you in this criminal case. He's right, you know. Uh. You are now a permanently convicted felon. Your family who loves you and supports you. I only want to use the word forgive because forgiveness isn't even necessary. They're with you so much. They're so tight knit. But you have to live with the fact that you really put them through a ringer. No shit. Because they got to be related to this. To this. And like I said earlier, if you didn't catch it, is that, you know, the red pilled me, the, the, you know, advocate for all men part of me is saying that you've ended up as another statistic, bruh. A product of a single mother. I mean, enjoyed success. 
enjoyed success. And now you're going to a place where failure runs supreme. And that would be the prison. <laughs> calm down, Leslie. Calm down. Let's keep going. You've embarrassed your valuable friends in high places, the elected public officials, people yep. in the media. You've embarrassed them. You have to live with that. I don't know if those relationships, relationships can be repaired. You've become toxic in your own workplace, in your career. Uh, no shit, because he ended the show. He helped in that show. That show probably could have gone on for another year, even though the ratings were stinking by the time you know, you know, this shit came up, and he knew it was, so he wanted to make his star rise off of this shit, and it failed miserably, you went super woke, and then went broke, <gasps> let me find out, because you're going to be one of them damn things that make you go, <laughs> exactly, let's keep it going, future is uncertain at very best it was really on a rocket ship uh, to success and now you you've turned yourself into riches to rags yep and it's so unfortunate exactly Your very name has become an adverb for lying yep okay. oh. custody sheriff court is adjourned i am not suicidal shut the fuck up nigga i am not suicidal and i am innocent I could have said that I was guilty a long time ago. But if you'd have said that, that would weighed heavy on your damn conscience. But then again, on the real, you would at least own your bullshit. So this is what you get, baby. That's what the fuck you get, bitch. <laughs> and I don't care who knows, god damn it. I'll give him a week. I'll give him 11 minutes. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that was nice. Big up the memeology for that. Yeah, man. And um, that shit. That. Talking about he not suicidal. Get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> I can like. Acting like you some sort of William Cooper or some sort of, you know, guy that blew the whistle on somebody or or shit. Even like Jeffrey Epstein's creepy motherfucking ass. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you miss me with that bullshit, man. Ugh. OK, so um, we'll, we'll transition on to some more shit to some more other shit. Let's, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's see what the mayor thinks of this shit. All right. Article in the New York Daily News. Lori Lightfoot applauds Jesse. Juicy Smooley. <laughs> Juicy Smooley. As uh, Dave Chappelle wants to call it. All right. Check it out. <laughs> Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot applauds Juicy Smoulet's jail sentence. <laughs> That's what you're going to be called. The city feels vindicated in today's ruling. <laughs> <laughs> Is it some of that hidden LGBT hate? You know, lesbian on the left, gay dude on the right. Check it out. Isn't that telling? Lesbian on the left, gay dude on the right. Now, you guys listen to the podcast. You, you, you're not able to see this New York Daily News article, but here it goes. Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot applauded the five-month jail sentence handed down to disgraced actor Jesse Smollett on Thursday for lying to cops about being a victim of a made-up racist and homophobic attack. The criminal conviction of Jesse Smollett uh, by a jury of his peers and today's sentencing should send a clear message to everyone in the city of Chicago that false claims and allegations will not be tolerated, Lightfoot said in a statement Thursday night. <laughs> the former Empire actor, 
39 years old, was taken to Cook County Jail to immediately start serving his sentence. He was also handed 30 months of probation. Ooh. <gasps> oh, man. And must pay a $25,000 fine along with restitution of more than $120,000. <laughs> So that's already $145,000, including the fucking court costs that your motherfucking ass gotta pay. Ain't that about a bitch? Woo! Alright. So, Lightfoot, he more like heavy clubfoot, the bitch looks like. <laughs> she says the malicious and wholly fabricated claim made by Mr. Smollett resulted in over. 1500 hours of police work that cost the city of over $130,000 in police overtime, Lightfoot added. The city feels vindicated in today's ruling that he's being held accountable and that we will appropriately receive restitution for his actions. Oh, there's a video. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, this, I think this was him going into the motherfucker. Check this out. Let me take that. Uh, yeah, there we go. Check this shit out. Look at this dumbass. Hey, yo, make a hole. Make a hole. Make a hole. Back up on us. You're about to meet your fate. You have anything to yeah, they're about to make a hole, and he's about to meet his fate. <laughs> Back up on us. Come on, give us faith, please. You planned? Give us faith. Hey, quit the team, man. Back up. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. I'm out of your way. Appreciate you. Hey, you don't show me, man. Appreciate you. 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 Oh, so there that is. There we have it. Yeah. Oh, juicy. This is him before going into the courtroom. And he arrived in that motherfucker late. All right, let's see what it is. Thursday's sentencing stems from Smollett's claims to cops three years ago that two white men put a rope around his neck, said they were in MAGA country. <laughs> oh, big, up. Uh, big up to my man, Nate, the lawyer. <laughs> he started that shit when I was watching Ricada. That shit was hilarious, man. Um, all right, so they were in MAGA country, poured chemicals on him and called him racist and homophobic slurs back in January 29th, 2019 in Chicago. Brothers Abel and Ola Usandaro, who are black, later testified that Smollett paid them for supplies for the made up attack and told them where to meet him to stage it. Smollett repeatedly claim he's innocent. He was found guilty in December for five counts of disorderly conduct and was facing up to three years in jail. Judge James Lynn blasted Smollett as arrogant, selfish, and disgraceful in court Thursday. After the sentencing, Smollett told the Georgian court, Your Honor, I respect you and respect the jury, but I did not do this. I am not suicidal! <laughs> <laughs> And a uh, criminal defense attorney from L.A., Joshua Ritter, a, par a partner with this one law firm, told the Daily News in this statement. Smollett's statement to the court at the end was remarkable. It's the words of someone who still views himself as a performer. And you got it. He hit that shit right. He hit the nail right on the head. He was a performer. 
the way that you know he tilted his head up in the camera you know he showed us a little flash of his arrogant self his arrogant alter ego juicy smoule and we'll just you know kind of feed off of the Dave Chappelle thing the weight of the motherfucker looked at the camera was just fucking like oh dude you staged this shit dude that told me more than anything all right back to the article Joshua Ritter goes on to say it seemed like a dramatic finale to a movie scene where the main character stands up and professes his innocence one last time the judge was correct that Mr. Smollett is so caught up in his ego and narcissism that he seems untethered to reality. And that is true. The same can be said for Jack Murphy. The same could be said for, you know, Fresh and Fit. And others like this. When they get caught up in their bullshit. But then again, the ego and narcissism, you know, makes them feel like they're bigger than life. And they go on to do this stupid shit. And speaking of bigger things, we're going to talk about the fucking ugly as homemade sin ass Lori Lightfoot. But before I get on over there, let me see what we got, baby. Oh, big up Uncle Guns. How you doing? Do do do. Flag his channel. Do do do. Kick him in the ass. Do do do. Write a strongly worded letter. Do do do. Who hurt you? Do do do. Call the police. Do do do. Party time. Excellent. Anyway, what up, Hidden? How you doing? All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Oh, Shinobi Wands in here. What's happening? MGTOW OUTLAW! <laughs> and Shinobi one with the doo doo doo! <laughs> Fuck. Oh man. Eventful fucking week, man. Get a load of the schlong on the Chicago mayor. <laughs> Check this shit out, bro. What the fuck? Oh. <laughs> Lawsuit filed against the city of Chicago and Mayor Lori Lightfoot, the politically explosive complaint alleging Lightfoot blocked a potential compromise with Italian Americans over the controversial Columbus statue. Some of the explicit language in the court documents is raising eyebrows tonight. WGN's Julian Cruz is in Chicago's Little Italy community with reaction. Julian? So before I start this, all right, the mayor of of Chicago is Lori Lightfoot. She looked like this this nasty bitch. She looked like she smells like ass and gold bond powder. <gasps> Let a motherfucker find out. She smells like <laughs> All right, all right, Leslie, you just took a bath, I know. See, that's my that's my monster, Leslie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 we know. We Well, Dina and Ray, Italian-American community leaders say that if the allegations are true, they're deeply disappointed with the mayor who is accused of making extremely offensive and vulgar remarks about Italian-Americans back in October during a private Zoom session at City Hall with a Park District lawyer and others. Mayor Lightfoot, do you have anything to say? Are you going to talk to the Italian-American community? Unity. Mayor Lori Lightfoot not taking questions after a downtown event in the wake of a defamation lawsuit filed yesterday in Cook County Circuit Court on behalf of now former Park District Deputy Counsel George Smear Neotis. And I was just flabbergasted. Community leader Ron Onesti says if the allegations are true, Chicago's mayor didn't act in good faith when it comes to delicate negotiations over last fall's Columbus parade after Italian Americans sued the city, then tried to reach a compromise with the park district in order to display a Columbus statue at the parade for just 20 minutes. You know, a good faith gesture would be 
allowing us to utilize the statue for the Columbus Day Parade because our community was bruised. We felt slapped in the face. You may remember back in 2020, unrest over the Grant Park statue, Columbus, a controversial figure to many for what historians say was a brutal subjugation of Native Americans. As a result, Chicago's mayor ordering the removal of several Columbus statues across the city. But in what the lawsuit alleges was a profanity-laced Zoom call with the mayor last October, the Park District's deputy counsel bearing the allegedly defamatory brunt of a mayoral tirade. You bleeps, what the bleep were you thinking, she's alleged to have said. You make some kind of secret agreement with Italians. You're out there measuring your blank with the Italians, seeing who's got the biggest blank. The mayor pictured here at today's gathering of the Council on American Islamic Relations, verbally attacking then Park District lawyer George Smear Niotis on the Zoom call, according to the lawsuit. Where did you go to law school, she's alleged to have said. Did you even go to law school? Do you even have a law license? Smear noticed, claiming that Lightfoot damaged his reputation with allegedly false and outrageous statements calling his professional integrity into question. A reaction to one is one of almost complete surprise uh, that the mayor would use that language uh, referring to the Italian-Americans. Enrico Marabelli says the allegedly crude and disrespectful references to private parts said to have been delivered <laughs> by the mayor, extremely hurtful to Italian-Americans. <laughs> well, I, I think if we learn anything from this, we learn that if you have a conversation about privates, it doesn't always remain private. <gasps> the mayor allegedly adding, I am trying to keep Chicago police officers from being shot and you were trying to get them shot. My bleep is bigger than yours and the Italians, and I have the biggest bleep in Chicago. Shots fired, shots fired. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? Yeah, that's some shit. That is some shit a bitch would say. That is, that's something, yeah. That's something of her, something that a person of her ilk would say, bro. You know, in a strange and stupid way, it doesn't surprise me much, bro. It doesn't. Like, come on, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, shit. So, I'm trying to keep po Chicago police officers from being shot. And you were trying to get them shot. My dick bigger than yours. And the Italians. And I have the biggest dick in Chicago. <gasps> Are you serious? Well. <laughs> this is funny. Bro, it's. Oh, man. Where do I start? <laughs> Can I start from the fucking beginning? Where to begin? I mean, it's common of these types. The penis envy's real. I mean, look, like, do I gotta describe that in full detail? You damn right, not only is she racist, you damn right she's also misandrous. You damn right there should be a law against her. But here's the thing, with Chicago, and I've lived there, and Chicago mayors, big up my man Polska Bob, it, the thing about that is Chicago mayors have been corrupt ever since the 19th century. But now corruption has a new face. You dig? And um, yeah, man, it, this old ugh, gosh, man. Yeah, that, that kind of looked like Beetlejuice when he got his head shrunk. They are right about that. Keep going. Onesti says none of this was necessary. We're Chicagoans, that's our mayor. And for our mayor to be talking about any ethnic group or any group of people that are in her constituency to, to that degree, I just hope it's not true. You damn right, because here's the thing. Chicago is not only made up of blacks. Chicago is not only made up of Jews. Polish ones at that, right? But it's also made up of Italians as well. All right. And 
you know, I don't call it the second city for no reason. I mean, Italians not only, you know, uh, uh, run rampant in New York, but they they live in Chicago too. You know, I, I knew a few, and man, they have the best markets, bro. I mean, you get the, yo, yeah, man, don't even get me started on the best markets. I mean, the yo, the fruit's on point, meat's on point, all that, you know, the groceries on point, everything on fresh. You know, grocery stores don't even compare, you know what I'm saying? That, that's, yeah, that's what I loved about being in the shy. But, um, yeah, this is shit that, you know, Lightfoot is doing or saying here. Uh, only goes to show, you know, what she's like. You know, we all know what she's like. I mean, we've been known that she's been misandrist as fuck. But not only that. Yeah, apparently racist, too. <laughs> And somebody said black folk can't be racist. <gasps> Let me find the fuck out. That bitch looked like... <laughs> for real, man. For real, for real. Just got up in the morning type. <laughs> yeah, easy big fellow. <laughs> she got a lot of monster business going on with that head, but <laughs> back to this shit. Now, Corporation Council refusing a request for comment, telling us that since this matter is now being litigated, they will not be commenting on this. And no word from George Smear Notice, who says in the lawsuit that he suffered emotional distress as a result of this incident. He was unable to perform his job, and thus, he says, he was forced to resign in February. In Little Italy, Julian Cruz, WGN News. Thank you, Jim. Oh, boomers and bitches. I can't believe this shit. Boomers and bitches. Oh, what up, one fast Dak? What's happening? Um, <laughs> why her? <laughs> he didn't say, why are her eyes a yard apart and looking in different directions? And then Maha Ronin goes on to say, imagine waking up to that. Then one fast deck said, just think, some dude hits that. Um, yeah, no, I think she's the dude in the relationship that hits that, right? You know, of course, you know, hidden, you know, told, you know, made that known right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is crazy, man. But let me see what's up with these comments, man. <laughs> oh, so you holding down the southeastern U.S. Well, bro, uh, there's tornadoes going on in that motherfucker now. Shit. Because in the spring, you get your tornadoes, but in the, you know, toward the uh, later summer months in the fall, there's them hurricanes, man. <laughs> All right. So um, anyone and everyone has the potential to be racist. Nothing less. You are right, Nadune. Nanundi. Excuse me if I pronounced that <laughs> incorrectly. Oh, man. But yes, anyone and everyone does have the potential to be racist. God damn it. Shit. Hell, I could be. You know? Yeah. It's always these motherfucking Asians. <gasps> Never mind. No, no, no. <laughs> Oh shit! Emotional, damn it! Hey, yeah, yeah, man. Um, if Lightfoot is so tough, send her to Russia to go get her girlfriend, Griner, out the clink. Um, yeah, I'm. Well, fuck. Send her to ass to motherfucking Ukraine. You know what I mean? And Mahironin for the common thread because. Yeah, she definitely does love herself. The ego and the um, the arrogance and shit that comes with being in the uh, in power and all of that. Her and Jussie Smollett have something to co in common. Not only are they homosexual, but they're fucking arrogant too. No different than us hetero motherfuckers. <laughs> 
We dishing out equality in this bad boy. Fuck all that. Let's go. MGTOW Outlaw say, yes, sir. I've been in them tornadoes, and I have to make a video sometime about it, and they ain't no fun. Bruh, you better not pull a motherfucking, uh, uh, what's his name? Bill Paxton, and you better not try to, you know, follow that shit like Twister. You know, like where I'm from, Oklahoma and shit. Yeah, it was a thing. Guys were like, hey. Hey, so you wanna go? You wanna, you wanna go spot some tornadoes, dude? And cause he was like um, a uh, ham radio operator, and a part of what he does. I mean, yeah, ham radio is his hobby, but a part of his job is to follow storms to get a more accurate picture for the meteorologists when they're doing radio shit and whatever. Ten motherfuckers on up in here. That's the highest I've ever seen. <laughs> And I love all 10 of you, goddammit. All right, let me go. Show soap, yo, love, and hit it up. You better do you, goddamn right. You better motherfucking bring them Fonzies up in this motherfucker. <laughs> Shut up, Lori. Goddammit, you ugly bitch. Let's <laughs> get back into this motherfucker. Okay. Biden. Oh. oh, excuse me. Brandon reassures Dems they are in strong position. For the midterms. Ah! Oh, fuck! I'm not even gonna hit a button for that. Oh, shit! Strong position for midterms. Well, are you review? Are you revealing your hand? Will um, you know? Hitlery tried to, uh, you know, work her little magic again. Will Obama work his little magic again? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, will he, you know, are they going to steal another one? You know, just go up in the, run up in the motherfucking, uh, in the ballot boxes and, and again, and, and, and pull one of those, um, uh, those swarm robberies or those swarm shopliftings of the upcoming 2024, you know? <laughs> well, for in this case, 2022, uh, this year, and that's when that's going to happen. Let me read this shit from Politico. What the fuck do they got here now? Over the years, Joe Biden has become <laughs> to the... Democratic National Committee, over the years, Brandon has come to the Democratic National Committee to express regret, as he did in 2007, after calling Barack Obama articulate and clean. He has come to rally his party, as he did during the bleak midterm year 2010. And on Thursday, this past Thursday, he came once more, this time with the hope of a reset. <laughs> Uh, bro, a reset? Don't nobody like that word. <laughs> nobody likes that word. Brandon told a ballroom full of DNC members out of Hilton in Washington, we are the strongest position we've been in month. Democrats, he said, should, could keep the house. If you do, it's because of city boundaries. Gerrymandering actually works the house. And it can work the house for either side. Right now, that is pretty much the Overton window. It, it's identical to that, politically anyway. And uh, according to the article, it says, that's, wishful, that's likely wishful thinking. Damn right. Even in an improved position, Brandon and his party are in trouble with the Democrats still widely expected to lose the House in November. But with Biden's poll numbers ticking up in recent days after his late fucking State of the Union and with the country rallying ever so slightly behind his handling of the war in Ukraine. Notice how they said rallying ever so slightly. Oh, 
let the motherfucker find out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's about, you know, 20 of you motherfuckers out of 100 that are going, yeah, go out there. Come on. Yeah, I stand with Ukraine. Shut the fuck up. All right, back to the article. Even skeptical Democrats are feeling oddly optimistic that a Brandon rebound might last and that the party's midterm losses might not be so severe. I think it's a good time for momentum to shift, said Mary Sullivan, a party committee woman from Vermont. It gives me hope and lowers my anxiety. Well, bitch. You gonna need a whole lot more anxiety pills after this year. When they, when they run your bitch ass out. All y'all. Yo. Primary is the key word. Now, I don't mean to get all political, but sometimes I run a political show. That does happen. You know, not too many others are saying shit about it. You know, and like the story goes on to say, Democrats still have reason to be anxious, but at a critical juncture in the midterm election cycle, the party is in an improved position from just three months ago, where moribund party officials met in South Carolina to close out the last year. At the time, Biden's approval ratings had cratered. The Moronicon variant was surging. Just as Stephen Breyer had yet to announce his retirement, a development that would allow Brandon, last month, to make his historic and base-pleasing selection of Kentanji Brown-Jackson to the Supreme Court. Kentanji. Oh, fuck it, fuck. I just heard a knock on my dough. Oh, shit, who came through? How are you doing, Broadwood Black? What's happening? Uh, just coming off, coming down from the high that undead chronic gave me with that fresh roast. Yeah, undead oh, dudes have that. It was that was glory. That was glorious. <laughs> mm. It's just um, oh the, my uh, god, man. That PUA guy. But, um, I was just wanted to chime in on that. Um, uh, no, I don't. I don't. I don't like. I don't. I don't use the substances, bro. All right. All right. I'm just like you know, ment the mental, the mental high. You know, the dopamine rush. That yeah. I keep it natural. Keep it natural. You know? No, I keep it natural. It's all green, isn't it? <laughs> God put this here on earth for me and for you. <laughs> God put with, God, God put, put something else on this earth too, but they run up an eighty percent divorce rate each year. Yeah, you so you know there. everything in moderation, yeah. right? <laughs> Hell, oh, we man. got tests coming out of Sydney saying they can't even stay in a the relationship. They having so many problems. Oh, over in Sydney. Oh man, speaking of many problems. You know, um, there, there's, of course, you know, um, still more rioting in the streets and, you know, COVID cops in every corner. And, yeah, that that's like, OK, what we had here and hell, I mean, yeah, what we had here is like a thousand times worse over there. You know, I wonder how Sydney MGTOW what we doing. have over there is what they want us to pay attention to. It's a distraction. Enter into a new cycle of manipulation is what we are. Word up. All right, all right. It's a manipulation tactic. Speak. Come on, man. We manipulation. We had the last two years. What was it? Like 20, 20 billion Americans died from something that was cooked up, and now they don't want nobody to. They don't want nobody. They want everybody to go hush hush about it. So that we got to distract. It. We got to be distracted by the fake encroachment over in somewhere far away land that it isn't even legally bound to be called a country. Look over there, Ukraine. Come on, man. Ain't nobody buying that. 
Kind of like that. I ain't uh, buying that. Kind of like I've one been of those old long. tricks, you know what I'm saying, where a guy is trying to go, hey, point somewhere else out there into the ether and goes, hey, Superman. And then you look, <laughs> hoping you would get distracted by what this dude is pointing at. And that's pretty much what the government in place is doing right now. Man, it's pitiful. Hmm. That's like that scene from um, Sin. Well, uh, Alvi- from the uh, man is Hagnes from Sin. I forgot her name. Clavira. She uh, has a uh, spike. Look at the uh, red shiny button. And then when he when he does, she does the teleportation trick and she gets the hell out of there. Uh, yeah. To that's use a video game is. reference, I don't know how many people have played Sin or know about it, but that's a classic 90s shooter. Yeah, Good way to spend your uh, afternoon. Yeah. yeah. Word up. Shit. Uh, yeah, you you are correct, my high room. That guy pretty much did get rid of Charlie 19. And um, our time period is literally a tampon. <laughs> Ooh! Let me find out. Don't stick them in the wrong places, man. Yeah. Yeah, but speaking of I mean, which, I want to, I mean. Go ahead. I want to get back to the fact of when we're going to start holding invest. when we're going to start holding some, some real investigations into the last thing, the, the, the last two years of just, Tom Foolery that we ain't had. Nine. I mean, we got black lives pedophiles. Black 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 lives pedophiles can run all through our streets, burning down stuff, and um trying to uh snatch up seventeen year old guys who just want to come there and um you know put a couple of fires out. But um we -hmm. had to be locked in our home. Said we oh we got two 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 weeks that turned into two whole ass years. Two weeks turned into two years, man. I mean, we just. But then passed when the, the mom when the when the, the kitty diddlers wanted to get out and play, nobody said a thing. That's so strange, and I'm just like, when we gonna start holding people accountable for that? When we gonna realize, you know, this is all the big okay. old uh bag of tricks and it's a uh it's a stale show it's a conspiracy man brother the, ain't no nah. ain't no the only 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 way conspiracy exists is if there's someone's trying to exploit you and not have you notice it you know what's really funny too as well i mean a lot of what was seen as conjecture baseless uh conjecture and shit and uh conspiracy theory as of as of the last what I'd say five years ends up becoming true today. Strange how that goes on. Some some spooky little shit going on, you know. And um, it's, it's funny how yeah, um, yeah. back in the nineteen twenties, these uh the, the Christian types told told them they they came out and told them they like you go down this path, you can kiss the world as you know it goodbye. And it was called, um, it was called, uh, what was it, uh, archetypal, um, archaic, barbaric. It was called all these mean words to rile up the emotions of people. And everybody followed their local kami and went along with it. And then now we can't even, um, hell, you can't even have a conversation with somebody without them spazzing out and having to kneel over damn near. Without thinking moment. about having a damn mental breakdown over the fact you said a naughty word. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just like that one story that I put up. Um, you hear about that uh, that uh, interview that Lil Boosie had done with Vlad, I think it was. And um, he was talking about, you know. No, man. I, why, I, I don't mean, follow sellouts. Well, yeah, true. But even a broken clock is right twice a day right so yeah but there's a more compository pool information that you can get knowledge from yeah that's true and um do vary your sources even from the ones you do disagree with you know oh no you gotta look at you you can't you can't can't discriminate against information we we all know that that's what they want you to do they want you to only look at one side of something they only want you to look at that one 
a nerve at one viewpoint. Knowledge goes all around. It's a it's a worldwide thing. Knowledge isn't just from some one on viewpoint. All right. I was just listening to you and then you had roboted out a little bit. Hold up. There we go. Try it one more again. Because uh, you had cut out it. Um, knowledge is, um, you know, that that valuable and that real out here. Um, without it, you know, I mean, the, as the old cliche goes, knowledge is power. It's going to continue to be power for every last one of us out here. Um, and when one discriminates the information and you show that you know every now and again and he'll get back in he kind of fell out but um i feel what he was saying when you do have you know knowledge you know held back from you and you know things like the shadow banning that's that's kind of equivalent to book burning i know you all have heard it you know, you guys have taken that, you know, that Crimson Capsule and sometimes even the black one. And that's cool. And you get it. You know. But do vary your sources. Even if it is the lamestream media. You know. Whether it's from the deep dark web. And even from the lamestream media. But compare the two. That's why I would rather see video of it. That's why I'd rather would see, you know, official documents from it. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes, com you know, the commentary messes it all up. I don't know. Maybe Susie had gotten rid of my man, Broderick Black. You know, I, I appreciate him being here. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this was his first time being here. And um, I do respect him for stepping up and getting on in here. Hint, hint. <laughs> And then we're going to put that on because uh, Broderick Black kind of uh, inspired me to put this up. And we're going to do that right now. Mm. Oh, yeah. So what I'll do here is I'll uh, bring up this right here. That's That, that was from, um, it was a nice little nugget of joy from Reason TV. And uh, I'm going to show you how this goes, man. We ain't done yet because uh, we are about 40 more minutes. I mean, this is the second hour, right? This should be the, you know, right now and right about now here. I'm just going to go ahead and just half this up. Yeah, we're still going to be here, so don't go anywhere, guys. Um, on Odyssey, I'm still live over there. We ain't went no motherfucking where. And I'm going to throw that link on up in here in the chat because it's about to get real. I mean, Broderick Black already, you know, inspired me to let y'all know that, yeah, it's time that we just shake away the training wheels, take them motherfuckers off, and we start talking about that real shit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw that Odyssey link in here and y'all go on over there because this YouTube right here. I'm going to go ahead and end that. You know, we're still live. We're still doing our thing. But um, I'm also live on Odyssey at the same time because what, what's about to be shown, what's about to be brought, and uh, I, I just seen you right there, Broderick Black. I'm going to bring you back. And, um, yeah, we're going to get into the real nitty-grit of the bullshit. All right? So uh, before I do, I'm going to leave you with one of them things that make you go, Ooh. And that is just been uploaded, ready for you to see. I'm going to throw on the commercial. And those that are on YouTube, we're out of here. But those that are on Odyssey, go over there. And if you're not already over there, yeah, you better click that link because it's about to get crazy in this motherfucker. Ooh. Let a motherfucker find out. So let me show you a little something. Damn. 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 From Psyche Soap, the new controversial series, 
That is too hot for you two. We've got little fails. And we've got big fails too. So prepare yourself mentally for the edge of your gaming chair. Presented by Psyche Soap, it's the things that make you go. Damn! Damn! Available on these alternative platforms, listed below in the description of this video. And speaking of alternative platforms, click that Odyssey link because if you're still on YouTube, you are wrong. We are out of here.